Davis, California. The Cube is proud to present USA Football Developmental Games featuring some of the finest young athletes in the nation. This morning, this afternoon rather, as we're in the third of three games, it'll be Team Nugabauer in the blue uniforms against Team Reader in the white uniforms. And welcome to the Cube, the place to watch, share, and live stream events. We are thrilled to have you with us for this third and final game of this three-day tournament. Good afternoon, folks. I'm Frank Dariano along with Paul Meiskins. And we are going to see two teams made up of mostly juniors and seniors in this third game. And once again, it will be a battle of two teams coached by the coaches who coached in the morning game. Adam Nugabauer of Tiffin University, the head coach for the boys in blue this afternoon. And Team Tenor, that's Jason Tenor out of Oak Ridge High School, nearby Oak Ridge High School here. And we have a mix of players coming to you from mostly California, but not entirely. We have plenty of players coming from Arizona, Nevada, Washington, Illinois, even Iowa, as I take a look at the rosters here, and Georgia. So again, these players are competing for the chance to be selected to play in the International Bowl for USA Football. That's held every year, the last weekend in January. This next year it'll be at AT&T Stadium once again in Arlington, Texas. Yeah, these guys had to go through regional camps to get to this point, and they're hoping to, to make it one point further. And final game of the day should be a good one. We're looking for a competitive ball game after uh, two games that were Pretty lopsided, including the 34-6 to game that just finished up here between the uh, underclassmen, the sophomore-junior game. Yeah, though our, our first game, while it ended up a multiple-score game, it was 3-0 going to the fourth quarter, and then uh, got a little more lopsided by the final score. But we've seen some good plays all day long, and I'm sure we'll see uh, more than a few more here in our final game. Some very entertaining football, especially on defense. Lots of good interceptions, lots of key runs. And again, if you're just joining us, special rules here. No, special teams heavily model, modified. Uh, no kickoffs. Ball starts from the 25-yard line. And no uh, kick return coverage. So here we go. In the white uniforms, Team Reader starting off first and 10. Again, we'll have 15-minute quarters, 8-minute breaks at the half. First and ten, and the first half of the game goes over the quarterback's head, rolling almost to the end zone, but he's able to keep it out of the end zone, down to the one-yard line. That's almost similar to the Super Bowl a couple years ago, where the first play, the first score, and almost first play of the game was a, a safety. That was the uh, Seahawks Patriots pa uh, Seahawks Patriots Super Bowl a few years back. About a, uh, a big loss, loss of yeah, on the first you, play. Absolutely, all the way down to the one yard line for Team Reader. And so, starting in the shadow of his own end zone, there, quarterback for Team Reader just trying to sneak it away, and he gets through the line. He jukes ahead and out to the 14 yard line. Nice gain to get some broom. That is number 12, Silo Stanton, quarterback out of Canyon Springs High in Nevada. Yeah, and he broke free, and really he was only about a guy or two away from a 99 yards the other way. Everybody all piled up in there, and he scored it free. That was a nice run there to get out of the uh, shadows of the end zone. They'll, they'll welcome the uh, breathing room as they get it out to the 24-yard line. And it will be a third down yeah, third. and 21. So quite the ways to go. But thankfully not backed up against their own end zone. Two receivers out to the left side. Stanton is just going to, no, he's going to keep it. Fakes the handoff, turns to the right side, breaks through a couple of guys, makes it out to the 21-yard line. 
Tackle on the play for Team Nugabauer by number 33. That is Matthew Koziel from Chandler High School in Arizona. And that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, unfortunately, two nice runs by Stanton, but after the, the first play fumble, and at the punt, oh. And again, if you are just joining us, we got one kicker doing all the work today. That is, uh, that is yeah, Charles Crescenti. Who's that? You can see the higher blue defense drop back for that punt. So we'll see our first look at the uh, Team Nugabauer uh, offense here when we come back. You're watching USA Football on the Cube. So our first look at the Team Nugabauer offense. First play is a handoff and a nice run across the 40-yard line and into Reader territory. Yeah, number 11, Meza with the nice run there up the middle. Alec Meza out of Vista Grande High School in Arizona. The quarterback also from Arizona. That's right. That is uh, Luke Ashworth. Quarterback out of uh, Arcadia High School in uh, North Phoenix. And a run right there. Yeah, Meza, Get, Meza again. Give to Alex Meza. And that'll move the marker just a bit. Second down and four. 11.51 to go in the opening quarter. Come to you live here from Aggie Stadium on the campus of the University of California, Davis. Luke Ashworth getting some direction from his coach. Yeah, Adam still, Nugabauer. Yeah, long, long look over here while in the shotgun. Looking to run up field after reading the rush. And on the keeper, might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. And yeah, Ashworth there wanted to get rid of it quick, but both of his wide receivers to the right were closely guarded, so he decided just to hold on to it and get what he could. And hangs on to it. Third down and four. Falls on the 32-yard line. Third down here for Nugabauer. We'll see what they do. Reader, meanwhile, going with the standard 4-3 defense. Nugabauer, two receivers bunched up on either side. Shotgun formation, one back. And they are going to hand it off. And he is stuffed at the line. Held up. Yeah, the Reader defense was selling out on the run. That had a guy coming in from the side on the blitz. It's what you call a swarm there as it makes it a fourth down. And again, with uh, ways to go, no sign of Crescenti as we'll go for a fourth down here and four. Ball's on the 32-yard line. Ashworth with two receivers out to his left side. Sends the tight end in motion. Bunch short. Possibly a quick run, but no, they go on play action. Ashworth rolls out to his left, tries to float it, and got it to the 10, 5, and into the end zone. Touchdown for Team Nugabauer. That is Damon Kennedy, the halfback out of Bethel High School in Washington. On the catch and run into the end zone. Nugabauer with the early lead. Yeah, that was a real nice play there by Ashworth, the quarterback, rolling to his left, throwing across his body, nice touch on it over the defender, and then uh, the easy catch and run into the end zone for Kennedy. Crescenti on to attempt the point after. And 
And the kick is up. And it is good. So 7 nothing in favor of Team Nugabauer here. You're watching USA Football on the Cube. Back here live at Aggie Stadium on the campus of UC Davis, USA football on the cube. First down for Team Reader. And a flag on the play. On the quarterback keeper. That is Silo Stanton once again. Stanton. The, the holding penalty is going to back him up once again, so... Second drive in a row, they're starting going backwards. They had the, the, the fumble on the opening snap, their last drive, and then here's a 10-yard penalty to back them up. That backed them up, though, to the uh, one-yard line. They'll back up right now to the 15. Only the 15, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the one. I'm curious to see it. Really, we haven't seen Team Reader do anything yet, but have Stanton run with the ball. See if they can get some uh, action here for some of the backs and receivers. Stanton with one man in the backfield, two receivers out to his right side. And he's going to hand the ball off. Ball carrier's got some room, makes it a couple of yards. Number seven, Travis Davis out of Artesia High in California. Yeah. The uh, secondary for the Team Nugabauer is all creeping in, ready to crash, expecting... Probably Stanton to run, although the run. Davis managed to make a few yards out of it to make it second down and uh, 14. And he's going to fake the handoff, look to his right, now throwing, looking for the open receiver, and out of bounds. He had number 35, Caleb Nielsen. In his sights, but uh, Nelson was very well covered. Yeah, that was 20 Dominic Sanders with the coverage, and really, even if that ball was inbounds, probably no chance to make the catch closely defended there. So that'll bring up a third and long, third and 14 to be exact, 8.24 to go in the opening quarter. And uh, Nugabauer will see if they uh, bring a rush here on third down. Reader with three wide receivers out. And a quick handoff. And nothing doing there. Nothing doing for Travis Davis. And that'll take us to fourth down. Yeah, try to catch the Nugabauer defense by surprise, but really, as much as Reader's been running the football, Nugabauer probably wasn't shocked by yep. the run on. Third and long. They were ready for it. Absolutely. So, once again, Crescenti on to punts. And punts here, again, wherever the ball lands or wherever it's fielded is where the next drive starts. No returns. Crescenti's punt is a pooch up high. Hangs up there. And they are going to spot the ball where it was first touched there. On the 33-yard line, and that's going to get Nugabauer beautiful position when they come back for their drive. You're watching USA Football Live on the Cube. You can be the best in your house. And then your state. And get all the love. You can be the best in this house. You could be faster than the fastest. You can carry on a legacy. Then add a couple of these. And then make everyone want to be like you. And you can stop there. But you won't, because you're not done yet. For the athletes moving the game forward, Gatorade's creating the fuel to do the same. Fueling today, fueling the future. Back here live at UC Davis, and uh, Luke Ashworth 
just uh, completing the pass there to number two, Isaiah Covert. California boy there from Bella Vista High School. And Team Neugebauer didn't waste no time after that short punt. They couldn't wait to get back on the field. And with great field position, who could blame them? Second down and uh, 11 there. That's actually a, a, possible, a loss of a yard on that throw. Two receivers out to either side. Ashworth nearly fumbles the snap, but corrals it in. Now rolls out to his right, looking to turn the corner. He does, and makes contact hard on on the right sideline. Yeah, big hit there from defensive back Matthew Corton, the DB from Illinois. But nice job there to to, to gain some yards after kind of a, a bobbled snap. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Yeah, it looked like he wanted to hand it off to the running back, but by the time he... Recovered. He had no choice but just to run with it himself and able to gain six yards. Turns out Ashworth had better ideas and made a made a gain out of it. So third down and five balls on the 28-yard line. Ashworth with uh, th- once again four receivers out, two to either side. Takes the snap, looks to his left. Now throws, looking for a man, looking, and he was he was held. A very late flag. Number 81 there, Karrion Thigpen, was the intended receiver. And expecting to see a pass interference call here. And there it is, pass interference against Reeder. Tack on... 15. That's going to move the ball all the way up to the 14 yard line for Nugabauer. And the boys in blue still with four receivers out. A bit of contact there, but a screen pass to the right. Brought down by two white jerseys is number six, Mason Bealy. Receiver from St. Joseph's High in California. Yeah, a little bit of a different look there for from Team Nugar, too. They had the four wide receivers, but on each side, it was almost one wide receiver right behind the other. Kind of a, a lead block for a screen pass, which we saw there. Nonetheless, a nice gain to make it a second down. Second down and five here. Ball's on the nine-yard line. 4.36 to go in the opening quarter. Nugabauer looking to go up by two scores here. They already lead 7 to nothing. Ashworth back to pass. Looking, got it, touchdown! Nice pass to slide it in there. Luke Ashworth completing the pass for the touchdown and corralling it in number 6. That is Mason Bealy once again. And nice throw there on the slant through it where only his guy could get it low, and Bealy went down and made a, made a nice catch. Another adjustment. Well, after uh, a touchdown, Alex Young on to uh, hold for Chris, Crescenti. Up, and it's through, making it 14 to nothing. In favor of Nugabauer, you're watching USA Football on the Cube, live from UC Davis. And the first play there by Reeder, a short run to the right side. Brought down there, number 20, Jonathan Soto. Santa Cruz High School there in the, uh, along the coast there. Not a play, bad place to, to live and go to school. Not at all. Not at all. See if Reeder can 
try to, I don't know, mix things up. They've been running the ball a lot, and the new Power defense has been ready for it. Let's see if they go to the pass here. Second and 11, ball's on the 24-yard line. 3.54 to go in the opening quarter. The other, the other negative is every every drive has started with Team Reader with a negative play, so it's been second and long every time for... Now Reader... Reader hands it off inside. Maybe looking for the pitch, but they faked it and instead just handed it off once again to Jonathan Soto. Brings the ball out to the 25-yard line which will make it a third down and about 10. That's right, third and 10 to be exact. Again, Nugabauer out to the early 14 to nothing lead. Reeder, not quite yet ready to abandon the run. And we got Kylan Harrison at quarterback for the first time. Nugabauer showing blitz. Harrison completes the pass. Cleanly to number 84. That's Bryce Stye. He's come here all the way from Nebraska. Norris High School in Nebraska. Uh, but that is all that he's going to get. Yeah, the first nice pass for a gain of seven, but not enough for the first down. Uh, looks like they might. I didn't say they might go for it, but. By the blue defense dropping all back to the 50. You'd say that they were ready to punt. That was uh, Kylan Harris on the throw there for Team Reader. He's uh, from San Jose High School in East San Jose. The punt by Crescenti. This one has some distance. Yeah, much better punt here. And bounces back, fielded at the 47-yard line for Fry Nugabauer, number 99, Lewis Williams picking it up and not often to see 99 filling a punt yeah that's uh whatever you can do to secure good field position and that's what Nugabauer will have now as they start out on a first and 10 on the 43 yard line the wind is definitely picking up here although I see the umbrellas are still out in the crowd but the wind is nicely uh, cooling things down And the ball is bumbled on the handoff. Let's see who comes up with it. It looks like the running back recovered it. He, although he was still trying to scoop it up and roll forward while picking it up. Gain a few extra yards any way you can. That was Ramon Organis, who's actually listed as a linebacker, but he was the ball carrier there for Nugabauer. Number 22, James Robert, picks it up there. And you were talking about the wind and, and the umbrellas and stuff. Well, it's, we got a big umbrella in front of us that keeps flipping inside and out. Struggling to say right side. It's turning into a cup. <laughs> Quarterback now for Nugabauer, number five, is Jacob Siegfried, who throws, looking for a man, and just overthrows just out of the reach of Kieran Thigpen. Jacob Siegfried, another California pro. Put deep down the sideline for Thigpen to go get, and last time they, they drew the pass interference, which helped set up their last touchdown. That is going to make it a third and seven as we're inside a minute to go in the third quarter. Ball's on the 45-yard line. So Siegfried... In the shotgun, once again, Nugabauer with two wide receivers out to either side. Takes the snap, looks to his left, now looks right and throws. He's looking for a, and he makes the catch. Nice adjustment to make the catch right there for number 88, Trey McBride, the tight end from Fort Morgan, Colorado. And like you said, great adjustment. Kind of looked, found the ball, turned, and, and made the catch between two defenders for a big third down completion. First down and 10 on the 29-yard line, 35 seconds to go in the quarter. Nugabauer already up 14 to nothing and driving once again. Yeah, that last catch was good for 26 yards. Uh, Nugabauer with only one receiver out to either side. 
Alex Meza in the backfield. And, uh, Check that. They'll bring another in receiver into the right side. Takes a staff and hand off to Meza, who's got room along the left hash and rum and uh, scampers ahead, rather, picking up a couple extra yards inside the 25 yard line. That'll do it for the first quarter with the score Nugabauer 14, Reader White. We'll be back here at UC Davis. You're watching Team USA Football on the Cube. So it seems this is sports performance, whether we're talking about Olympic athletes or middle school and high school athletes, the foundation is the same. We want to remove dysfunction and then build upon their sports-specific movements to allow them to function at a very high level on and off the field. Welcome back to Aggie Stadium on the campus of UC Davis here. The third of three games we're calling here today for USA Football. And with me live in the, live in the broadcast booth is uh, Jimmy Thomas, who's the manager for the U.S. national team. And, Jimmy, as we start the second quarter here, uh, tell me about a few of the players that you're watching in particular as we start the second quarter. Oh, well, there's a number of them uh, in all three games. Uh, this one in particular, I love the tailback on uh, – uh, Alex Meza, number 11, who uh, just had the ball here in the last play. He's got a great heart, great kid from uh, Gilbert, Arizona, I believe. That is correct. Uh, how about on uh, the defense here for uh, Team Nugabauer? Anyone else you are, or for Team Reader, I should say, who is uh, the person you're keying on right now? Oh, number 77 on defense. Uh, Lance Pagnolo, he's, he's had a good week. You know, he's tough in the fiddle, tough to move, you know. Clogs a lot of holes, creates a lot of double teams, and frees up his backers. So he's he's been a highlight and done a great job all week for us. And he has definitely grown. I actually called a game for his uh, school, Sobrato High School, there in Morgan Hill a few years back, and he was big then as a sophomore. Now as a senior, he is uh, definitely a presence there in the backfield. Uh, as we get to a thir third down and four now on the 23-yard line, taking the snap, looking and throwing to the right for overthrown there contact in the end zone that'll bring up a fourth down here for Nugabauer. i'll tell you what we have a we are deep at tight end i can tell you, you've noticed in all the games we've uh, we've heavily utilized the tight ends all day uh, and they continue to do so in this game so we are we are pretty deep at tight end here at this dev game especially at the end of the last game where most drives were basically passes to the tight ends very nice so we'll be going for a fourth and four on the 23 Nugabauer offense staying on the field. Siegfried will have two receivers out to his left side, one to his right in isolation. He'll move the tight end in tight and fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, looking downfield, throws, and no one there. Closest receiver there was number 14, Rajay Johnson, a California prospect, and uh, Team Reader will take over now. And, uh, Jimmy, we've got players from not only here in California and the Western States, but we've got players coming from all over the country to this. I mean, what does it mean to you that we've got players from as far away as Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, Massachusetts, not only coming, but uh, doing special teams here for a day like this? Yeah, you know, it's just it's a credit to the program and our growth. You know, players from all over the country trying to come out and attend the dev games, get better, and, and make the national team. So it's exciting for us. It's, 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 a, it's a big thing for us to have players from almost every state. They toss... Double coverage there. Tended receiver for reader number 18. That's Miguel Mendez Marin from uh, Hillsdale High School in the Bay Area. It's going to make it a second and 10 on the 23-yard line. 13.40 to go in the first half. Reader already down 14 to nothing. Trying to mount a drive to cut that lead in half here potentially. Under center here for reader number three, Kylan Harris. 
another Bay Area prospect from San Jose High. He's going to hand the ball off. And the ball carrier has some room, jukes up and crosses the 35-yard line. Very shifty there. That's Colby Calvin from Mount Vernon High in Washington. And we've seen some uh, excellent runs here throughout the day as well. Exciting up there in the Seattle area. We have a nice following, a bunch of kids representing uh, Team USA from, from the greater Seattle area. 13-10 to go in the first half. Ball is on the 36-yard line, a first and 10 for Team Reader. And they'll send two receivers out to the left side. One receiver goes in motion, and they're going to hand it off inside once again to Kobe Calvin. Kobe will just pick up perhaps a yard. And he does. So second down. Ball enemy on the 37-yard line. Second and nine. And USA Football and the U.S. National Team would like to thank its corporate partners for their support of the U.S. National Team and the 2016 Developmental Games. A run again, once again, to Colby Calvin. Picks up a couple more yards out to the 40-yard line. Among those great sponsors, being a great coach goes beyond the practices and Friday Night Lights. Coaches across the country are making big impacts in the lives of their players that they teach in USA Football wants to celebrate and honor these special coaches nominate your coach today at usafootball.com backslash thanks coach join the conversation by using the hashtag thanks coach football fans join the conversation check out the hashtag earn your stars and follow the u.s national team on twitter at usnft for exclusive content and photos nice run to the right, left side for kylan harris didn't see anything so just took the ball himself made it out to the 40 44-yard line there on third down and six. Will be just a few yards short of the first down. Another nice tackle there from Jared Abels. He's been all over the place in the defensive backfield, uh, hailing from Nevada. And once again on hand, Charles Crisanti to punt. The kick is high, floats up, and going to land right around the 30-yard line, bounces, and that's where it's going to end, about 30 or 31-yard line. And again, we're coming to you live from UC Davis, Aggie Stadium here on the campus of UC Davis, just about 15 minutes down the road from Sacramento, the state capital. And we'll be back here with USA Football on the Cube. Back live at Aggie Stadium here, and Neugebauer will take over. Looks doing, looking to his right, completing the pass for Moore. Breaks the tackle and scampers over. Out to about the 38-yard line. In at quarterback now for Neugebauer, number 18, Tyler Domino, hailing from nearby Del Campo High School. Brings up a second and three on the 37-yard line. 10.03 to go in the first half. And Domino will take the snap and hand it off. Ball carrier cuts out to the right side now, cuts back inside, makes it out to the 40-yard line before being swallowed up by a host of white jerseys. Among them, big number 77, Lance Spagnolo. Jimmy just talked about again. He's from uh, Sobrato High School in Morgan Hill. A nice, uh, nice representation of the nearby Bay Area here, Northern California, in this game. And yet again, we see uh, not a, not a, a big game, but 
Well done by Alex Jung to break several tackles to, to move the chains and get the first down. Pick it up right there. 9.15 to go in the first half. Ball on the 40-yard line. Nugabauer leading 14 to nothing. Hand off once again and brought down and swallowed up in the backfield. Number 40, Devin Hart from McEachern High, all the way from Georgia. He makes it uh, that beautiful tackle for a loss. Takes Nugabauer all the way back to the 32 yard line. An eight yard loss on the play. Second down, 18 to go now. See what Nugabauer does after that uh, big loss. For Reader, they'd love to get off the field and get their offense a chance to cut back into this game. Show what they can do. Once again, Domino throws and unable to make the catch there is uh, number 80. Joshua Diaz from Delhi High School. Another tight end in. And like he was just talking with you briefly, we really have seen a lot of passes almost to the tight ends more than any other position. It really is a, front, a reflection of the evolution of the game, seeing uh, tight ends getting into the action as much, uh, if not more, than, uh, say, some of the standard receivers as we've well, seen. Uh, you know, we mentioned the Patriots with the near safety, but, you know, take a guy like Gronk, you know, it's just, you know, a, a, an outstanding tight end like that can just make such a huge impact. Nice reception in traffic. And he got out and got the first down. What a play there for Damon Kennedy. Again, as uh, Jimmy was talking about, lots of players from the state of Washington coming down here. He's from Bethel High School, Washington State. And that'll be a first down, moving the chains out to the 41-yard line. Actually, take it back Fourth down and nine. Hey, you know what the the yard, red zone yard marker looks like? It because you can hardly see the the first down marker kind of hidden, turned sideways. That's right, hardly hidden, right there at about the fifty yard line. Yeah. So hiding in plain sight there. But anyway, fourth and nine, six forty two to go in the half. The punt from Crescenti fielded at about the twenty five yard line, and that's where our team reader will take over. You're watching USA Football Live on the queue. Thirty-nine to go in the first half. Reader on offense now, and the give is quickly sent off there. Yeah, just a quick dive play almost for a couple yards. Just a handful there. About a three-yard gain there. See if we can get uh, Team Reader here can, can put a, together a nice drive here. Perhaps try to drive down in the half of the score, cut this deficit in half. Maybe move the ball a little bit more. They've been very heavy on the run so far. That was Jesus Marquez Navarro from uh, Mendo Mendota High School in Southern California. And here they go to the pass. Looking to his left now. Looking back and trying to ball ahead, but uh, just picking up a couple of yards there on the ground. That's number 16, Darren Miller from Orcutt Academy Charter High School in Southern California. Yeah, he had all sorts of time, but nobody was open. He looked right, looked left, scrambled left, and eventually fell forward for a yard or so. It's a testament to the defense here for Team Nugabauer, as that is going to bring up a third and eight. Ball is on the 27-yard line, 5.22 to go in the half. It is a 14-0 ball game. And on third and eight, Reader will put two receivers out on the left side. 
It's a low snap, but he corrals it and quickly throws it on a screen. He's got more. He's out to the 45 before being gobbled up at about the 46-yard line. Nice catch by number 84, Bryce Stye, the tight end from Nebraska. Yeah, once again, another tight end making a play. Came across there, and even though the low snap was bobbled, kind of came across the line of scrimmage and found himself with all sorts of room. Big first down. So here we go with a first and ten. Five minutes to go in the half. Ball is on the 46-yard line. Takes the snap, looks to his right and his left and throws, rather. And quickly tackled down once again is Stye. Darren Miller to Stye. Tackle on the play for Neugebauer for number 23, Zach Geary from Vintage High School in California. We are at a second and nine on the 47-yard line. We'll see what perhaps the best field position of the day so far for Reeder. Quick handoff. Gets a, actually a keeper. Great there on a quarterback keeper option. Faked out the defense well enough to pick up a few extra yards. Faked out the defense and even you a little bit. Exactly. That's when you know it's a good fake, right? Able to get it past midfield. And into Neugebauer territory. Makes a very manageable third and four. You pass or run, both both good options here to try to move the chains. And makes it a uh, tricky situation here for the Neugebauer defense. We'll see how they go there. Coming out with the standard 4-3 defense. See if anybody blitzes here. Looking at a heavy rush possibly from the left side. And the, wow, breaks a tackle off the hit. You can hear the contact way up here, but still moving ahead and just uh, straight on in was number 27 there for Reader Jesus Marquez Navarro to give the boys in white a first down. Yeah, bounced off a couple of tackles there, fell forward. So back-to-back -back first downs and some, some momentum and see if perhaps they can punch it in and cut this lead in half. And now a timeout. So, Nugabauer will take a timeout, and so will we. You're watching USA Football live on the Cube. The icon of the game. The icon of competition. The icon of athleticism. The icon of fandom. <laughs> The icon of the future. The future of football is now. Welcome back to UC Davis Aggie Stadium here. Team the USA football developmental games live on the cube. The icon of athleticism. And yeah, we're getting to late in the first the half. Icon of fandom. 14 to nothing in favor of Team Nugabauer, the boys in blue. The but Team Reader, the future. white team, they are mounting the a drive. Football is now. They're on the 42-yard line, first down and 10. Reed the fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, trying to the evade the defense. Competition. Tries to sneak it in there for a few yards. The icon of athleticism. And does so. Hey, Reader's the mixing up their play calls a lot better on this drive. They've, they've had some success throwing the ball finally, the really for the first time this afternoon. The and they've, even when running plays, they've gone to both sides of the field, so they kind of you know, have the defense a little more spread out, not, not knowing what to expect. And an excellent way to move the ball inside and outside. The icon of the game. Reader now putting two receivers the out to the right, to the left side. And the handoff the to the right side. To Marquez Navarro. The icon of We'll get it down to the 34 yard line. The icon of the future. Again, Navarro future off a of tackle or two, falls forward now. for an extra yard or two. Make, we'll make this a very short third down. Third and two at this point. 
So we're inside of two and a half minutes to go in the half. Finishing this half with a touchdown would be very much a dream for a reader. Let's see if they can make it happen. Miller goes under center and tries to just burst ahead through the middle to get it. And I think he did. Number 84, Bryce Stye signaling the first down. And they got it, moving the chains. I don't think I've said the Patriots enough here in the first half. That was Tom Brady-like on that snake. Just quick take it under center and run right up. Gain three, four yards, move the chains. Anything to win. Whatever you can do. See if Coach Reader's on the sideline wearing a hoodie with no sleeves. Embracing his inner Belichick. Miller, hands off. Daylight there for Marquez Navarro. Down to the 25-yard line. I tell you, that reader offensive line creating some very nice holes for Navarro to run through. Wide open. And whether they punch this in or not, it's a great sign for them for the second half to come to try to get back in this game. They're building some momentum here, staying on the field this long. Handoff, fakes the handoff. Miller out to his right, flushed out of the pocket. Now looks. Will he throw? No, he'll just run out of bounds. Evading a couple of different uh, defenders in blue. Yeah, that was a great job by by one of the Team Nugabauer linebackers to stay with the tight end. Stai, is they were looking for Stai on that little out pass, but stayed right with him, forced him to run. So third down, a buck 20 to go in the half ball is on the uh, 26-yard line. Third down and five. And Miller, we'll see how he does with uh, in the shotgun formation, takes the snap, looks to his left, now fades back to his right, still looking upfield, will try to run. He gets it, but is tripped up. Number 77, Cyrus Duckett was in there on the tackle. That'll bring up a fourth down and uh, six, or a fourth down and uh, maybe a little bit shorter than that, fourth down about four. On the 27-yard line. And a timeout on Team Reader. 54 seconds to go in the first half. You're watching USA Football on the queue. What does it take to become elite? It takes more than dedication, focus, and hard work. It takes an elite-level training program. Customized, sports-specific, online. Your perfect workout every time. That's Vault Athletics. Back to Aggie Stadium here at UC Davis. USA Developmental Games on the queue. 54 seconds remaining in the opening half. Fourth down and five on the 26-yard line. Team Reader will go for it. Team Nugabauer trying to pump themselves up to make a stop on fourth down. And Darren Miller maybe try to sneak it again. He rolls out to his right, takes the snap. And rolls out of bounds before he can get close to the first down marker. And you know what happened there is he was trying to hard snap and get somebody to jump. And he thought he had somebody that jumped, which is why he snapped the football. But he didn't. Obviously, by the flags not on the field. So he thought he had a guy that jumped and didn't. So a long drive that's eaten up most of the second quarter comes to an end. Reader not getting any points, but they get, they get some... Much needed momentum back. And Nugabauer now comes back onto the field with a two touchdown lead. Less than a minute to go. We'll see if they uh, do anything or we just roll on into halftime here. Number 17 for Nugabauer is the quarterback. That's Brandon Sweet. 
came here all the way from Florida, Lake Highland Prep. And a short give inside. Time for just a few more plays here. Down to 33 seconds to go in the game. Clock continues to run. Ball carrier there, number 22, James Robert for Nugabauer. You would think Sweet, if he had his choice, would, would be throwing the ball. I came all this way. I want to throw the football. Let me have a shot to make a play down the field. Put some air under it. He might have a chance here on the final. what's going to be the final play of the half. Ten seconds to go. And I take it back. That run was the final play of the half as the clock will tick down. So 14 to nothing. Team Nugabauer leads Team Reader here in our third of three games. Team USA football developmental games here at Aggie Stadium on the Cube. Protect what matters most. The USA Football Protection Tour is a series of free one-day football camps that educate youth football players, parents, and coaches on the importance of proper equipment fitting, tackling fundamentals, and CDC-approved concussion recognition and response protocols. Watch for this year's Protection Tour schedule and sign up today for an event near you. We see the leaves turn and know it's time. A rite of passage with the field as a classroom and hash marks as guidelines. We see teammates becoming friends, friends becoming brothers. We see moms and dads standing taller as their kids dig deeper. We hear laughter and lectures, pads popping, Praises sung through a face mask, echoing over proving grounds. Where character grows stronger, and lessons last a lifetime. But we also feel the power of teamwork and the magic of mutual goals. We feel the emotions of triumph and loss, the development and growth of team. And that's why we do what we must to certify coaches are trained, to verify safety measures are taken, testify about the values of the game, to strive relentlessly to satisfy every player and coach's desire to be better. We are caretakers of playing fields that yield enriched lives, teachers and protectors of an American tradition. It is a responsibility we all take seriously, a challenge we all must embrace. Because we are forever football. Heads Up Football is the best and, in fact, the only good way I know of changing the culture. It's really been about uh, creating a safer environment for our kids. Being the pilot program for Heads Up Football and me being the first player safety coach, it's completely changed everything. We're looking around going, why aren't we all doing this? There is nothing here that fundamentally changes the game of football. There's nothing here that we're not currently teaching. We're just teaching it in 25 different ways. And ultimately, there's the potential that we see a return that we're making the game safer. Everything evolves, everything grows, and this is the right thing, the most responsible thing to do. As a league administrator, I mean, I can't even imagine a program that doesn't do it. They adopted this because they love the game. But also, in a couple of years, the youth become high school players. It's an evolving project. Heads Up Football has changed the way we play. It's changed the way we practice, and it's changed the perception in the moms and dads. We have one consistent match of what we're talking about and how we're teaching our, our athletes to play the game. From ankle biter through 12th grade, we have one consistent curriculum. The continuity of the program at the youth level, executed all the way through the high school level, is so very important to the parents. 
it's kind of part of the fabric of what we do and how we coach now. It's just helped us be a better staff and a better community. First and foremost, uh, we've had fewer head injuries. We have seen a sound decrease in concussions, in, in collision injuries. We're able to show with data that there's a difference. You know, Centerville High School played in back-to-back -back state championships and had the fewest injuries of our 25 high schools. That's a big deal. It makes me feel better because I know that my son is safer. He would come home and show us the stuff that he's learning. I just felt great about that. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad Heads Up Football is teaching you that. We're making tackles now that maybe we wouldn't have made a couple, you know, a few years ago just because we, we constantly hammer in the, the basics. Through Heads Up Tackling, I definitely am a better player and a better tackler. Our generation is getting taught a different way to tackle, like this is the right way. I think that it's starting to uh, really pay off because our numbers, we're up 40 kids, um, which is huge. Wanting safer football is, you know, is, is absolutely the right thing for kids. Do this. Do it yesterday, both from the youth club level and then from the high school levels, because this is only making this a better game, better, safer game. The icon of the game. The icon of competition. The icon of athleticism. The icon of fandom. The icon of the future. The future of football is now. Welcome back to Aggie Stadium on the campus of UC Davis for the final half of our three-game Team USA football developmental games here on the cube. Again, the score is 14 to nothing in favor of Team Nugabauer in the blue jerseys. And they will uh, start out on offense.
Two quick scores early in the game on touchdown passes is the difference here. But it was a long drive to uh, drain out the end of the second quarter for Team Reader. And Neugebauer will look to build back some momentum and build on that 14 to nothing lead. In there at uh, quarterback for Neugebauer, handing it off. Nice run to start the half to number 11, Alec Meza. And they've got number 17, Brandon Sweet in at quarterback. Once again, he's from uh, Lake Highlands, Florida. Lake Highland Prep, Florida. Brings up a, a second down. Actually, no, that was good enough for a first down. That was good enough for a first down. Take it back. First and 10 on the 36. Hand off to Meza. He's got room. He's crossed the 45 and out to midfield. Tripped up and brought down on the tackle by number 22. Ronya Moore, another nice run there for Alex Meza. Yeah, first 11-yard run, and now the 14-yard run. So. Ran up there with a full head of steam. First and 10 at midfield. Two receivers out to the left side. And a sack brought down with authority in the backfield. Number 70 for Reeder. And that is Ryan Hecker from Resurrection Christian School in Colorado. Yeah, it looked like perhaps he wanted to hand that off and then... Never uh, had time. Yeah, uh, just happened to, to eat the football and just go down hello. So that brings the ball back to the 45-yard line for a second down and 15 early third quarter here. In the backfield now for Neugebauer is number 24, Caleb Petrie from La Jolla County Day School in San Diego. And he's going to fake the handoff. Heavy rush. Let's it go. One-headed catch. Oh, that got a wonderful reaction from the crowd. Turn him back. What a spectacular catch that was from Trey McBride, the tight end from Fort Morgan, Colorado. Yeah, that, I think that might have been our catch of the day. I think you could say that very well. Trey McBride looking behind him and just pulled it in. Yeah, one of the uh, most impressive two-yard gains ever. Absolutely. It brings the ball to the 47-yard line, third down and 13, but Trey McBride might have been the biggest reaction we've seen all day long from the crowd. Yeah, certainly offensively. So heard a big reaction for a big hit earlier in one of our games, but... The crowd all, all impressed with that catch there. Third down and 13 on the 47-yard line. Sweet takes a snap, looks quickly to his left, completes the pass to McBride once again, who takes a couple defenders with him before being brought down at the 47-yard line. That is a gain of about three or four, but uh, not good enough for the first down. And that makes it a uh, fourth down and seven on the 47-yard line. So here comes the punt from Crisanti. Crisanti looking to pin Reader deep into their territory. We'll get him at about the 19-yard line. That's where they'll take over. Quick switch here. And you are watching USA Football Live on the Cube. You can be the best in your house. And then your state. Then get all the love. You can be the best in this house. You could be faster than the fastest. You can carry on the legs. Then add a couple of these. And then make everyone want to be like you. And you can stop there, but you won't. Because you're not done yet. For the athletes moving the game forward, Gatorade's creating the fuel to do the same. Fuel them today. Fuel them the future. Inside handoff. 
Nothing, nothing going there. That was uh, 24, Hunter Hogue on the off-tackle carry. And we saw Team Reader have a good drive right before the half. Didn't result in points, but we'll see if they can keep keep that going here on their first possession of the second half. Certainly a confidence booster if they can keep it going here and maybe get some points on this one. Long way from it now, second down on the 19-yard line. High snap, but corralled by the quarterback and quickly handed off. Quarterback there, number uh, six, Gabriel Olivia Sanchez from Patterson High School, just a tad south of here. And it'll be third, uh, rather, third down now. Third and long. And the ball is on the 19-yard line. Might look for a quick pass. Yeah, perhaps the number 84 style. Yep. Man in motion coming in. And fakes the handoff. Quarterback will keep it. Eludes a tackler, a tackler, but could not elude the second one. Gets out to the 20-yard line, does Olivia Sanchez, before he's brought down around the left hash. And that'll force a three and out. Yeah, so all that momentum and that they got from that final drive of the first half uh, back to three and out at to least, start the second. At least for now, as Crisanti will come on to punt. And the deepest Nugabauer defender hanging out right around the 34-33 yard line. But it's a nice kick, a nice drive of a kick, but gets a lucky bounce for Nugabauer, and they'll stop it at the 34 yard line. 9.27 to go in the third quarter. It is 14 to nothing, Nugabauer. You're watching USA Football live on the Cube. Quick handoff to Meza. He's got room. Gets out to the 45. Crosses midfield. And threading the needle down the left sideline. Make it in, into reader territory. Down to the 47-yard line. Yeah, although they're going to say he stepped out at the 50. But yet again, another really nice run by Meza. Really made the difference here. Although the touchdowns came on passes. Alex Meza has really opened things up here for Nugabauer in the second and third quarters. 8.57 to go in the quarter. First and ten at midfield. And the give once again is to Meza, who's down to the 44-yard line. And it's that quick first step that Meza has that allows him to get into the backfield faster than you can think. And the... Reader defense still has no answer for him. Ball spotted at the 46 yard line, second down and six. Takes a snap, throws quickly. It was a quick curl route, but Isaiah Cover didn't curl fast enough. Yeah. Like you said, a quick pass, almost too quick. He hadn't turned around yet, and the ball was going by his head. But the ball falls harmlessly to the turf. Bringing up a uh, third down and six for Nugabauer. Eight minutes to go in the quarter here. And once again, uh, under center for Nugabauer, number 10, Luke Ashworth out of Arcadia High School in the Phoenix area. Sends a man in motion, and now fakes the handoff to Mesa. Drops back to pass, facing the rush now. Throws back to Mesa, who's there for the catch. Gets a first down. He's got more. He's out to the 35, and then smacked as he crosses the 34-yard line. 
ending that uh, play promptly was number two, Adam Lopez. Defensive back out of Kennedy High School in California. Yeah, that was a nice hard hit. Really, if he missed, the play might have ended in the end zone. But still a nice gain for a first down there by Mesa on the screen. Way to make something out of nothing there. It'll be a first and ten for Nugabauer on the 33-yard line. Ashworth with Mesa in the backfield once again. Two receivers out to either side. Throws it off. I take it back. That's not Mesa. That's 24. Caleb Petri in there now. Giving Mesa some rest. And Petri, no chance there. He was met in the backfield and had no, nowhere to get away. Went down for a couple yard loss. A loss of about four yards on the play. To be exact, five yards making. Second and 15. Seven minutes to go in the quarter. Nagabauer leaving by a score of Nagabauer leaving by a score of thirteen or fourteen to nothing. Shotgun formation. Ashworth takes a snap, drops back. Now scrambles, looking for a seam. He's going to be brought down initially by a number seventy-one there for a Reader. That's Isaiah Moore from Boulder City, Nevada. And several other white jerseys bearing in on the fun. Yeah, Ashworth did a nice job. There it is to hold on to the football. He's being taken down there, trying to punch the ball free. He held on. Made sure he maintained possession there. Ball will be spotted at the 41-yard line, making a third down and 18 with 6.08 to play in the third quarter. Let's see what Ashworth and the blue offense... Possibly a quick screen as they split three wide receivers out to the left. Bunch formation. One lone out to the right. Ashworth takes the snap and is going to look over the middle. Fires over the middle. Has a man. Caught! Nice! Isaiah Covert just jumped out of the air and grabbed it. Isaiah Covert. All the way down to the 15-yard line. Even better than the 9-yard line. 9-yard line. Aired it out and got it good. Ashworth looking to punch it in, making a three-score game. Takes the snap, hands off to Mesa who bangs the ball up inside, gets it down to about the five-yard line before piled on. And stopping on the play there with the defense, number 77, Lance Spagnolo. Second down and six. Well, second down and goal now on the six-yard line. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Nugabauer already up by two scores and trying to make it three. Ashworth will spread out. Two receivers to either side. Looks to his right side. Quickly scrambles and he's looking for a man. Nice defense. A very quality play there. And giving himself a little bit of love there on the coverage. Is uh, number two. Be. Actually, that's number eight, Connor Keeley, defensive back from nearby Del Oro High School. I think Keeley wanted an offensive pass interference. He'll keep wishing for it, though. You don't, you don't get that call very often. Nope. 443 to go in the third quarter. Once again, third down and goal. You would think two down territory. They'd probably go for it if they don't get it here on third. Could be an easy field goal, though, but in any event, Ashworth looks to his right. Now fires over the middle. Tipped. And breaking it up on the play is number 42 for Team Reader, Trey Walker. And, yeah, there comes the white jersey. 
Crisanti will go for a field goal. I guess it makes, makes it a three-score game. This is a, not much more than an extra point. You would think Crisanti would make it. He made one of two field goal attempts in the first game earlier this morning. And Crisanti, the field goal try is up. And it is good. Just inside the right hash. That'll make it 17 to nothing. Hagebauer leading. Megabauer leading over Reader. And again, you're watching USA Football live on the queue. live at UC Davis Aggie Stadium here, Team USA Football, developmental games. Tackle there made on the play by number 20, Dominic Sanders. Defensive back from nearby Lincoln, California. It is 17 to nothing in favor of Team Neugebauer. Reader will look to get a play going after the three-yard gain on first down. Snap, quickly flushed out of the pocket, running for more, and rolling into a defender, landing at his feet, is the quarterback. That's number 12, Silas Stanton, a Nevada native. Yeah, not a surprise there to see him tuck it down and run. When he was in in the first quarter, most of his plays were him running with the football and there we see it, and he gets the first down. And ensures the drive will continue. Makes the ball out to the 35-yard line. See what Staten and the white jerseys do with this one. Silo Staten. With two two men in the backfield, two receivers out to his right side. And he's going to keep it and has the seam along the left side. Goes to the outside, crosses midfield and all the way down to the 46-yard line. And perhaps a late hit. Late. Yeah, 19-yard run and then probably 15 more at the end of it. So Brock Jones made the tackle there for Team Neugebauer. He's from... Clovis, California, in the Fresno area. Looks like there's a hit to the helmet. Could that be helmet to helmet contact? Referee pounding his head. That's exactly right. Add on 15 more yards and bring the ball all the way to the 31 yard line. From almost 130 to the other 30 there with the run and penalty. Very quickly. So first down and 10 at the 31-yard line for Team Reader. 2.44 to go in the third quarter. They're down 17 to nothing. Man in motion. And couldn't quite decide who was going to take the ball there. It ended up in the hands of number 29, Colby Calvin. But he was quickly gobbled up in the backfield. And almost looked like Stan wanted to keep it himself and then get it taken away from him. As we get down into the waning minutes of the third quarter now, it's still a 17 0 ball game. But that late hit penalty, helmet to helmet penalty, 
giving Reeder some room. But now they've got a second and 12 on the 33-yard line. Staten takes the snap and was going to hand it off, but kept it himself. And before he could get anything going, Lance Bagnolo was right there in the backfield to bring him down. And the Nuga Bauer defense is totally selling out on the run. And Staten had the, the nice run a couple plays ago, but it's going to be hard to, to get through with so many guys near the line of scrimmage waiting for that run. And when a run-happy offense is working, it's tough to bring down. When it's not, it's tough to really wor- work well with it. And that's going to be a third and 17. Ball is on the 38-yard line. You see the quarterback. will look, and he will throw, and right behind the... Actually, was low and intended for number 84. It was Bryce Stye. That's the nearest receiver. And on the, even before the snap, the outside cornerback was coming in almost to this guard on the short snap, leaving the outside wide receiver wide open. They seen Stan beat him with the legs. At this point, they're going to say they're going to try to make him beat him with a long throw. And just about a minute to go in the first, in the third quarter, rather. It's fourth down and 17. Yeah, and they're going to go for it, and they're, they're going to need their one of their biggest pass plays of the game. Two receivers out to the right side. Staten takes the snap and looking long. He's got a man but overthrew him. John Schaufer was the intended receiver from Prescott, Arizona. And that'll be it for that drive. Neugebauer will take over. You're watching USA Football live on the queue. Nice reception there. Uh, number six, Alex, number six, Mason Bealy. And once again, we've seen that play a, a bunch this afternoon. Just this short sideways screen. Get the guy in, in some space and try to make a guy miss. Nice four-yard gain on first down. Making some success with the traditional West Coast offense there. On the 47-yard line, it's a second and six as we near the end of the third quarter. In there, quarterback number five, Jacob Siegfried, will take the snap and hand it off right up the middle. Carrying the ball, number 22. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter, 17 to nothing in favor of Team Neugebauer. As we enter the final quarter of our day here, you're watching USA Football live from UC Davis Aggie Stadium on the Cube. Protect what matters most. The USA Football Protection Tour is a series of free, one-day football camps that educate youth football players, parents, and coaches on the importance of proper equipment fitting, tackling fundamentals, and CDC-approved concussion recognition and response protocols. Watch for this year's Protection Tour schedule and sign up today for an event near you. Back live here from UC Davis Aggie Stadium. Do you have what it takes to represent your country? Athletes in 6th through 11th grades can try out for the U.S. national team at regional development camps held nationwide. Athletes train with current NCAA coaches, compete against some of the top players in the region, and try out for a chance to represent the USA. 
Learn more at usafootball.com backslash regionals. Again, welcome back to Aggie Stadium. Start of the fourth quarter now, 17 to nothing in favor of Team Neugebauer as they will take over at the 45-yard line. The screen pass is floated over the head of Alex Meza. Jacob Siegfried led him a little too far there. And yeah, big break there for Team Reader's defense as Meza had all sorts of room if he could have made the catch, but a little over his head, and so... Reader down three scores, going to get the ball back here quickly to start the fourth quarter. Even more so of a break, that brings up a fourth down. And Crisanti will try to pin him deep. And that catch, let's see if it rolls. I think it's going to roll. There it goes into the end zone. Wow, Not, just missed. The, just missed the pylon, didn't it? Yeah, in fact, I think the pylon was already knocked over. It would have been interesting. Maybe just from the wind going by from the ball. That was nearly starting out at the end. So instead, we're going to start out at the 25-yard line. Team Reader finding themselves in a 17 to nothing hole. We'll try to mount a drive here to get back into this game. And under center... Team Reader. Looks like it's number three, Harris. That's correct. Number three, Kylan Harris. The San Jose High prospect. He, of course, uh, will be looking forward to playing in the annual Big Bone game. The oldest rivalry in the city of San Jose among public high schools, San Jose and Lincoln. Play that every Thanksgiving day. So Harris, under center, takes the snap and quickly hands it off. Back turns it upfield, rumbles ahead, tries to evade the defenders, but he's not going to be able to. Two blue jerseys all over him, 20, 21 and 32 for Neugebauer. That's Brock Jones and Ram Ramon Organese bringing down the reader rusher. Second down and eight on the 27-yard line. Kylan Harris and the reader offense. We'll see if they go to the air now after that quick loss or quick ga short game on first down. Sending a man in motion out to the left. Fakes a handoff and Harris is going to take it himself. And he'll be able to get it out to just about the 30-yard line before Spagnolo brings him down. Third down, we'll make it we'll make it a third down and about five. Thirteen thirty to go in the game. Harris in the shotgun. Takes the snap and looks to his right. Nearly sacked, but now turns the corner, finds a seam, rumbles up ahead, and out of bounds. Kylan Harris and a light, late flag on the play, but Kylan Harris, way to turn something out of nothing. As he was nearly sacked, but instead, balls all the way out to the 45. Let's see if they call it back, though. No, that penalty will be against Nugabauer, a personal, co uh, personal foul, a uh, contact penalty. And that's going to advance the ball further and into Nugabauer territory. So we've seen this several times where a penalty just helps uh, Reader on personal foul, late hit. Yeah, big run, and uh, but the penalty at the end has put, moved him into Nugabauer territory, but they uh, have yet to punch it in. Finish it off. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. First down and 10, ball on the 44-yard line. Harris with two men in the backfield. Sends one out to the left side, now drops back and throws quickly. Hits Mesa over the middle, jukes, and then finds a way in. And perhaps another late hit penalty. Alec Mesa 
Gets the ball down to about the 45, 44 yard line. Scratch that. That is uh, number. Scratch that. That's number 11, John Schaefer, on the catch. And uh, tack on some more yardage. Mesa's so been so busy, you almost expect every ball on reader side is the Mesa. Number 11 there. But again, that's uh, John Schaefer, wide receiver out of Prescott High School, Prescott, Arizona. Yeah, it looks like Nugabauer calls timeout. That's a ball on the 30-yard line now. First and 10, 13.05 to go in the game. You're watching USA Football on the Cube. You can be the best in your house. And then your state. Dang it, all the love. You can be the best in this house. You could be faster than the fastest. You can carry on a legacy. Then add a couple of these. And then make everyone want to be like you. And you can stop there. But you won't. Because you're not done yet. For the athletes moving the game forward, Gatorade's creating the fuel to do the same. Fueling today, fueling the future. Back here at UC Davis Aggie Stadium on the Cube. USA Football Developmental Games. 13.05 to go in the game. Heads Up Football's hands-on and online curriculum is available for youth and high school football programs committed to a better, safer game. Heads Up Football is endorsed by the country's leading medical organizations, all major college conferences, the NFL, and each of its 32 teams. Visit usafootball.com backslash heads up to learn more. 13.05 to go in the game, and a reader driving helped out by a couple of penalties. Whistle blown before the play could really get going. And not a flag on the field. They had, had to get the ball settled for Harris. Once again, sending a man in motion out of the backfield, and they'll throw a screen to him now. Almost falls over, but stays on his feet. Crosses the line of scrimmage, picks up a yard before going out of bounds. That's number 27, Jesus Marquez Navarro, California prospect there. Number 13, Tyrone Vickers, hits him out of bounds. Cornerback out of Brookside Christian High in California. From my neck, though, it's Stockton, California. There you go. We're taking the same path home as I will after this. Yes, he will. As Harris... As he's gobbled up in the backfield, we'll be uh, heading right back to my hometown of San Jose. There on the tackle there for Nuga Bauer. And number nine, Alex Paisola. He makes it a third and 13 on the 33-yard line. 12-12 to go in the game. The Nuga Bauer defensive line really has been impressive. Paisola... Benavides, Norbaum, and throughout they've had some good performances. They've they've stopped that run for the most part, and so far they they've kept uh, Team Reader off the scoreboard. At this point, the Nugabauer sideline chanting for a stop as Harris goes back to pass, evading the rush, and he won't go anywhere. Flushed out and flushed out of bounds, bearing down on him. Number forty-one, Jordan Cottrell Rice, from down south. Fullerton Union High School in L.A. Yeah, when, when, even if they win, they want the shutout right now, and you can tell the guys on the sideline want it as much as the guys on the field. Well, it's good as the defense has been playing here for Nugabauer. I'll have to make one more stop here on a 4th and 14 ball on the 34-yard line, meaning they'll uh, have to make it on down to the 20-yard line to keep this drive going. And Team Raider taking forever to get a play call, and they're going to have to call timeout. Timeout there on Raider. We'll step aside. You're watching high school. You're watching. You're watching USA football on the cube.
11.43 to go in the game. It's a fourth down and 14, and a key conversion needed here for Team Reader. And they're playing right in the in earshot of the Team Nugabauer sideline. And with the boys in blue up 17 to nothing, they'd like to keep the shutout going. Yeah. So here we're set, fourth and 14. Harris, Schaffer going in the back, in motion. Harris throws and just short. Bouncing at the feet of Bryce Stye. And that'll turn the ball over. Yeah, linebacker Andrew Burt's right there with the coverage. The shutout continues. 17 to nothing in favor of... Guys in the blue jerseys will send their deep, their offense back out onto the field and not wasting any time either. Starting a new drive here at the 34 at the uh, 34 yard line here. Under center for Team Neubauer, number 18 Tyler Demino. He's going to hand the ball off quickly. And the ball carrier is snatched up in the backfield. There's Alec Meza. Couldn't get away. Second down now. May have gained a couple of inches, if that. Yeah, and the team reader defense right now totally selling out on the run. The, the, the cornerback on the far side crashed in ready to... Left his wide receiver wide open. And they got to be careful of that because if this game is not out of reach yet, one more score and it will be. Well, yellow on the play. Yeah, the, uh, the neon yellow green cleated defensive player took a step over the line. It's hard to miss him with those cleats, I can tell you. Yeah, when those cleats cross, you can see him. No question who the... Uh, Penalty was called again. You've got some red shoes. You got a guy in front of us with some gold shoes, but it's hard to miss those those green shoes. Let me tell you. So it is going to be a second and five on the thirty-nine yard line. Ten thirty-five to go in the game. And not only does it give up the five yards, it allows more time to just keep ticking off the clock and winding this game down. Zemino with Mays in the backfield. He's going to drop back to pass and quickly was trying to maybe to run, but now will drop further back to pass, still on his feet. Now he's got to run. He's got plenty of room. He's got to cross midfield and get down to the 47 or 46 yard line. Tyler Zemino may have fallen over, but recovered, regrouped, and burst out into the midfield. And speaking of the green cleats, Devin Hart, the linebacker from Georgia, made the tackle there. Man, well, we good, good coverage in the secondary and able to break free for the big run. And who could blame Devin Hart when you've traveled all the way from Georgia to play in this game? You want to be seen. First down and 10 on the 47-yard line for Team Nugabauer. Tyler Domino, after the nice run on third down, takes the snap and hands it off. And another nice run, nice run for Nuga Bauer. That is 24, Caleb Petrie, crossing the 35-yard line. Caleb Petrie out of La Jolla County Day School in San Diego. First down on the play for the Blue Jerseys. And this is a simple hand up. Hand off up the middle, and he cut back, and 10, 15 yards down the field he goes. It's been a scrappy game for Nugamauer. Just shut down defense, and now some good running, getting it done. Hand off once again to Petri along the right side. Throws the stiff arm, but couldn't make it work. He's taken down at the 35-yard line. Petri on the carry. Taken down by, among others, number two, Adam Lopez out of Kennedy High School. Defensive back for Reader. 
Second down and nine on the 35-yard line. 8.40 to go in the game. Actually, this ball spotted right about the 35-yard line. Brandon Sweet now in at quarterback for Nugabauer. Flushed out of the pocket, rolling to his right. He's going to cross the 30 and then taken down. And once again, there's Devin Hart. Wrapping him up and rolling him out. That was a uh, two kids with possible dreams of playing in uh, SEC football. Hart from Georgia and, and sweet. sweet from Florida. Yeah, those two states are known for football teams. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So on a third down and four on the 30-yard line, Sweet will have four wide receivers to work with, plus a back. Takes the snap, facing a rush, and just overthrows his intended receiver, but he just got away with a heavy rush there. Damon Kennedy was the intended receiver there. I think he wanted to throw a little swing pass to the running back coming out of the backfield, and then that was covered up, and then he tried to throw the screen, but that was way too late. The defense read it, and... Nice play for the reader defense. It's a fourth down and four. And a first down would go a long way towards wrapping this game up. Not totally out of the way here with seven and a half to go. Nugabauer will have to get down to about the 25-yard line to keep this drive going. And there is Domino, still on his feet, crosses the line and down to the 20-yard line. Tyler Domino again on this drive, getting it done on the ground. And he is uh, showing some love for the hometown fans. He's from uh, just nearby uh, Del Campo High School, right here in the Sacramento area. Yeah, nice simple drop back and takes off up the middle. And nine yards later, first down, we've seen it. Nugabauer here on this drive with a couple different quarterbacks. Probably just doing their best to make sure everybody gets equal playing time. And making it fun for everyone. Speaking of different quarterbacks, so now Domino will take the snap and quickly hand it off. Hand it inside, picking up a few yards along the way. And that's number 12, Alex Young. Half back out of Buena Park High in Southern California. Yeah, at this point you would think they'll keep it on the ground. They've had so much success keeping it on the ground. And perhaps give a chance for a couple other guys to get in and and uh, carry the rock, see what they can do. And one of those, who hasn't carried the football yet? Pretty much. Let's get, that, let's get them a touch. Absolutely. So Domino in the backfield on a second and seven, takes the snap, and looks, possibly, and bowled over. Reeder getting a sack in. That's Isaiah Moore coming up here from Boulder City, Nevada, just south of Las Vegas. There you go, right after we talk about perhaps to keep running the ball, get somebody else to carry, they drop back the pass, but end up taking the sack. But it keeps the clock running. Third and 15 balls on the 26-yard line. I'll have to get it down to the 11 to keep this drive going. Tyler Domino getting a few words of advice from his head coach before uh, walking into the huddle. At this point, you never want to take a sack, but taking a sack is a lot better than an incomplete pass stop in the clock or even a potential interception going the other direction so just to get to the end of this game and that's on the minds right now of team Nugabauer. timeout on the field for the boys in blue you're watching usa football live on the cube
Welcome back to UC Davis Aggie Stadium here. A fourth, a third and 15 coming up for Team Nugabauer. Maintaining a 17 to nothing lead over Team Reader. Again, all the athletes uh, competing here as part of the Team USA program in the developmental games. Trying to get to the International Bowl to be played next January at AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas. Three, third down and 15 to go for Nugabauer. And Domino, under center, sends a man in motion to the left. Now takes the snap and fires. He's got a man wide open, and that's an easy touchdown to Alec Meza who's been spectacular on the ground but wide open getting a receiving touchdown in and that should put this game on ice yeah coverage mistake there by, by the defense left Meza I don't think there was anybody within 10 yards of him easily makes the catch and walked in the end zone for the touchdown so it will be 24 to nothing pending the extra point here Kick is up, and right on through. 24 to nothing, 5-0-1 to go in the game. Team Nugabauer running, riding a stout defense and a solid running game, and they lead late here in game three of our three-game series of the Team USA football developmental games. USA Football has all the right resources, videos, and blogs on educational football content. Get it delivered to your inbox every month by subscribing to USA Football's e-newsletter at usafootball.com backslash to subscribe. Interested in joining the fun and fast-paced action of NFL Flag powered by USA Football? Visit nflflag.com today to check out NFL Flag Leagues in your area and kick off your NFL flag experience with USA Football. First and ten for Reader. Quick pass completed to Bryce Stye, who's forced out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Darren Miller in at quarterback for Team Reader. And he's the quarterback out of Orca Academy Charter School in California. Miller with a first and 10 on the 37-yard line. Looks to his right, fires over the middle, and right through the hands of number 13, Matt Carr. Out of Oak Harbor High in Washington. Hello. Frederick McKay, the defensive back right there with the close coverage, making life difficult for the wide receiver. Second and 10 now on the 37, 4.15 to go in the game. And while the, the final... Team Nugabauer on the way to the win. You know they want to keep this shutout intact. No uh, no let up from the, the defense in blue. Nothing but a shutdown is what they're thinking. As Miller takes a low snap, fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, now cuts back to his left, trying to make something. Now he's going to just take the ball and run, gets across the 40, out to the 45 before stepping out of bounds. The crowd reacting to a beautiful block on the offense. That was Reader's number 13, Matt Carr, who's getting a nice high five from his teammates after that block that allowed them to get some room and make it a third and short, third and two here. And they'll try to sneak it up in. And that is going to work splendidly. Despite the scrum, it's going to be a fresh set of downs here. Yeah, Miller just quickly took it right behind the center, pushed forward, and gained about four yards. Really before the Nugabauer defense had a chance to get settled, they just pick up the first down, bring the ball out to midfield to keep the drive going. First down and 10 at the 50. 3.14 to go in the game. And Miller thought about the quick screen, but now he's going to rush out to his right 
And he's actually going to end up losing a yard or two. Flushed out of bounds. And Neugebauer's number 51. Reese Kelly. The Kelly fans in the fan, in the, uh, the crowd were happy with that play. Perhaps that's Mama Kelly, just uh, happy with uh, the young man there. Three minutes to go in the game exactly. Second and ten ball at midfield still, so there was actually no loss on that play. Miller hands the ball off, and there's a gain into Neugebauer territory. A nice spin through by number 24, Caleb Petrie. Actually, take back, that's number 24, Hunter Hogue from Dos Palos High School. Third and eight on the play now. Two and a half minutes left. Miller takes the snap. Quick throw and underthrown. Batted down there on the play. Frederick McKay on the coverage there. He's out of uh, nearby just Oakland High School. And McKay really was the only one breaking for that ball when it was thrown. He had one wide receiver running down the field. The other hadn't turned. McKay just couldn't get there quick enough. He might have been thinking about a pick six. Ends up being a fourth and eight. 2.20 to go in the game. And for Team Reader, this is pretty much it. They need a conversion here. Miller takes the snap. Throws quickly to his right. Bringing in the reception is Stai. And I think he's just going to be a yard short. Yeah, Stai made a nice catch, but just couldn't quite get away from the linebacker there and brought down about two yards shy of the first down, so the turnover on downs. Bryce Stai has made a couple of really nice catches for the boys in white today, but it's not going to be enough. Nugabauer will take over. It'll be a first and ten at the uh, 40, about the 44, 43-yard line. As we roll down the final two minutes here, of what has been an excellent day at Aggie Stadium on the campus of UC Davis. Yeah, when they make their selections for the international game, they're really going to have a tough choice between all the great tight ends we've seen just here today, let alone at their other regional games throughout the country. I'd say so. The tight ends will have a fierce battle. Some of the running backs as well. And even especially, you look at the play of the defensive line here for this the defensive line for this new this uh, Neugebauer side, they are going to have some serious com- uh, consideration come selection day for the USA national team. We are inside of two minutes to go, a minute and 40 to be specific. Second down and six now for the boys in blue. Under center once again is Brandon Sweets. Taking his time. Sitting comfortably with a 24 to nothing lead. Hands it off to Meza, who's not content to be comfortable. Letting his hair down and getting things down to the 43 yard line into Reader territory. And that'll give them a first down, and that'll all but do it. They can now probably one, one kneel down or one running play should be it. It really should. Jacob Siegfried back into the game now at quarterback for Neugebauer. Siegfried motion is half back right behind him. And he'll just hand it right. No, he won't. He'll fake the handoff and roll to his right, his left side, trips himself up. And was that a fumble? No. Ref says he was down. Ref says Siegfried was down, but there is, however, a player down for Reeder. He's grabbing his helmet. And the Reeder training staff coming out to take a look at him. That's, uh, that is number 70, Ryan Hecker. 
a defensive lineman from Resurrection Christian High in Colorado. He's helped to his feet, and he'll walk it off. And I would think now at this point they might just let the final 32 seconds run off the clock without snapping the football. Very especially, well may. Especially after that. I, I, you never want to see a guy injured and at this point. And that's exactly what the ref is signaling. Let the clock run. Well, looks they like might, they might have one more play. Here. Could even be a kneel down at this point, but uh, they are in a shotgun formation. Takes the snap and just hands it off up the middle. Mesa. Maybe we'll get a few yards, but that will just about do it as the final seconds tick down. And Team Nugabauer, with help from a stout defense, shuts out Team Reader 24 to nothing in the third of our three games here for Team USA Football Developmental Games here on the Cube. Again, we've been coming to you live all day here from UC Davis Historical Aggie Stadium. And thank you for joining us. It's been a beautiful, beautiful day. And uh, any final thoughts on the game? No, really good day. We saw we saw some outstanding plays in every game. You know, games weren't quite final score wise that we would have liked, but certainly the tight ends, especially stood out along with some of the running backs. So a lot of talented players here today that we got to see over the, the, the morning and the afternoon. And as we wrap up things, we'd like to thank our sponsors here. Uh, Riddell, the industry leader in football head protection, is proud to support the U.S. national team as USA Football's official helmet and protective equipment partner. Siege Sports is proud to be the official uniform partner of the U.S. national team. Follow Siege Sports on Twitter to check out the custom uniforms and apparel they can create for high school and college teams nationwide. To learn more, visit SiegeSports.com. Cutters Gloves. If you want to be the best, you have to wear the best. Cutters Football Gloves and its grip technology are in a league of their own. Cutters Football Gloves, the official glove of the U.S. national team. And our official sponsors, Shock Doctor, Volt Athletics, Flip Give, Physio Control, Gatorade, St. Vincent Sports Performance, and ESPN. That's going to do it here for us live at UC Davis Stadium. For the crew here from the Cube, I am Frank Dariano along with Paul Meisel. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day. Good afternoon.